So you want all the God of War spoilers, do you? Maybe you haven't got time to play it, or maybe you're just really impatient. Either way, we're going to really spoil the heck out of everything in the next few minutes, so get the hell out of here if you don't want some of the biggest twists and the ending revealed. Last warning, we're about to ruin all the big plot points in God of War. Most of the game sees Kratos trying to defeat the Stranger, who's later revealed to be the Norse god Boulder. He's invulnerable to all damage... I can't feel any of this until Atreus accidentally stabs him with one of the mistletoe arrows he'd been given by Sindri, undoing the spell and letting Kratos kill him. Why? Why do you even care? You, you could have walked away. The cycle ends here. It must be better than this. <laughs> The witch Kratos meets is actually the goddess Freya. She's the mother of Balder and the one who made him magically invulnerable. That's why she gets angry about Atreus' mistletoe arrows and destroys them. You're wicked. You find any more, you destroy them, understand? Do you understand? Say it! I understand. If I see them, I'll destroy them. She's also pretty upset about her son's eventual death and sounds a bit like she might be coming back. I will rain down every agony, every violation imaginable upon you. I will parade your cold body from every corner of every realm and feed your soul to the vilest filth in hell. That is my promise. He saved your life. He robbed me of everything. Atreus is Loki. This is something you find out right at the end of the game when you reach the giant realm of Jotunheim and discover these murals. Here you discover Kratos' wife was a giant all along without anyone knowing and had foreseen everything that happened in the game. She also originally wanted to name Atreus Loki. Loki? That's the name your mother wanted for you when you were born. She must have called you that to her people. And things look bad for Kratos as well, with one of the images apparently showing him hurt and cradled by Atreus. We're so close to the end now. Yes. Yes, we are. Most importantly, Kratos gets his old blades back and reunites with both Athena and Zeus via visions. There's nowhere you can hide, Spartan. Put as much distance between you and the truth as you want. It changes nothing. Pretend to be everything you are not. Teacher. Husband. Father. But there is one unavoidable truth you will never escape. <laughs> you cannot change. You will always be... a monster. I know. But I am your monster no longer. Let's see what those blades can do. The meeting with his father even recreates the final moments of God of War 3 where Kratos beats Zeus to death in the first person. Kratos might be the Norse god of war Tyr, teasing the possibility of games set in Egyptian, Chinese or Mayan cultures. You never meet Tyr, but he's meant to be wise, peaceful and everything Kratos wants to be. Numerous hints point to the two being the same person, from the Kratos branded wine in Tyr's vault, to Tyr's friendships with the giants, which makes sense if your son was one, and there's more. 
There's even talk of time travel which could make it possible when it's mentioned the World Serpent was thrown back in time during Ragnarok. Plus, Atreus basically says Kratos and Tyr are the same at one point. You hate the gods so much, but Tyr proves that gods can be good. And you're good. You only killed those deserving, right? There's a hidden ending after you finish the game. The credits roll once you've scattered Kratos' wife's ashes and you're left free to wander the world. However, the true ending only happens when you return home and rest in Kratos' bed. That triggers a meeting with Thor and the full endgame credits. So that's God of War well and truly ruined. If you've any questions about all of that, then leave them in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching and make sure to hit the boxes on the left for more content from us and press a button in the middle to get yourself subscribed to GamesRadar.